Uh, there is opportunity to make money in markets in all conditions, from markets going up, from markets going down, and markets even going sideways. So there's, op there's an abundance of opportunities. Also, just because you're based in the UK or you're based in the US or Europe, you know, it doesn't mean that that's the whole world. There's basically opportunities all around the world. Now remember in 2008 when people were losing money and banks like Lehman and Bear Stearns were going broke, they were glorious times. We made a lot of money from those um, markets. So, you know, get out of your head when you see the headlines, oh, stock market crash or this is happening. There's always opportunities. And the other thing is just because the stock market's going down, um, you know, who says that gold's not going up? Um, or cotton, you know, another market we've done very well. There's always opportunities. A lot of the time with news, you know, many times it's already factored in. You know, markets look ahead. It's not necessarily, when you buy a stock, you're not buying it for what it's doing right now. You're buying future earnings, yeah? You're buying a, what's coming out next. And same again, if bad news comes out, well, maybe it was bad news, but it's not as bad as everybody thought it was gonna be, yeah? So understand, with markets, we're always looking ahead. Do investors change? Some of you probably heard of Jesse Livermore. Um, there's an excellent book called Reminiscence of a Stock Market Operator, which was written many, many years ago, um, but well worth having a read. And he basically said there was nothing new on Wall Street. You know, everything basically has happened. It will carry on happening. And I totally believe this. You know, some people have said to me over the last 20 years, oh, your systems, will they carry on working with all the technology? Well, yes. In fact, they probably work even better. Things have just sped up a little bit now. Um, because it's still people, yeah? And if people stop being emotional, which I don't think is gonna happen, or stop doing the same things, then we're in trouble. But for now, people just carry on doing exactly the same things. They do what they did in the 1900s. They do what, you know, I just showed you in tulip bulbs. So yeah, this so is the Daily Mail from 1929. Greatest crash in Wall Street's history. Let's come forward a little bit. This is how most of you probably get your news now, is from, you know, people like BBC News or the internet. Global stock. Uh, shares tumble on US fears. That story is almost identical to the story that was written in that Daily Mail in 1929, all right? The news is being delivered by a different method, but the story is still the same, all right? So that's just to give you how things haven't really changed. So what do losing traders do? And you say, well, hold on, Vince, I've paid you money to learn how to win. I haven't told learn how to lose. You know, I can do that already myself. Well, do you know what? We can learn a lot from losing traders. It's all very well um, us, you know, talking about how to be a winning trader, but we can learn a lot from the other side as well. So let's have a look. What do losing traders do? They overtrade. They take a big position for their account size. You know, trading markets they can't afford, using the wrong product. Um, you know, this is a lot of time when people get in and they, they just want to trade everything and they want to trade everything as much as they can. Taking profits too soon. This is a classic, yeah, because you know, you've started making a little bit of money, you're scared that uh, you, you know, the profits are gonna disappear. You know, they, they're trading because they're bored, because they're watching uh, TV or a chat room. Um, the truth is we make our money by holding on to trades. You know, trades are doing well for us. We want those to run. They, you know, they are worth their weight in gold, literally. Taking losses too soon. This might sound a little bit contradictory, but what I've noticed the last few years, there's certain traders that are cutting their losses very, very quickly, and it's a bit like death by a thousand cuts. So they're losing 50 pounds, 100 pounds per trade, whatever, but they're setting their stops far too close. Yeah. So what they're doing is, you know, say, oh, I'm not losing much, but if they need to give, you've got to give a trade some space to breathe. It's very rare that a trade's going to go right straight away. So you've got to be careful, you know, by setting stops too close. Not admitting you're wrong. I've already said that about sunk costs. You know, governments are great at doing this. Yeah, you know, they'll go and spend billions on a fighter fight plane project, and it's just wrong when really they should have just dumped it. And they'll keep putting money into it. You see a lot with restaurants and businesses where the business isn't doing well, uh, but the owner doesn't want to admit that he's got it wrong, and he just keeps borrowing and leveraging up and whatever. Uh, best thing you could do is shut the business or close it down. Again, trading for an escape, what losing traders are doing, I think I've explained this already. People are trading because they're bored, um, you know, their job's boring, they, they just want something to do. That's not the right way to trade. Victim mentality, you know, I get people that say, oh, I only have a small account, I can't trade like you. Well, you know, if you know my history, I started out with probably a lot less than you have. 
Um, so, you know, with time, you can build up. But don't be a victim, you know, because no one's going to have sympathy for you in this business, and I certainly won't have. You know, you trade with what you have, you build up, and you work up. Never happy. You know, I get people that should have, could have, would have, if only, you know, if they make money, they're not happy. If they lose money, they're not happy. You know, if they make money, well, if I'd had a bigger trade on that, I could have made even more. Yeah, great, you know. And if my grandmother was had ball, she'd be my grandfather. You know, you've heard all the, the various stories uh, or sayings. Yeah, you know, so this... It's the crowd that are never happy, yeah? They should have placed a bigger trade. You know, I could have got out a bit higher. I could have got out a bit lower. Listen, I'm not here to get in and out of every trade perfectly. I make my money out of the middle. I'm not the first one in, I'm not the first one out. But I make millions, I've done very, very well from, you know, trading those trends, all right? And it's important that you are happy, you know, that you've, you've come out with a good winning trade, you've done well. Because otherwise you're gonna self-destruct because you're never gonna be happy, yeah? You're going to be always that um, I could have made more, I should have done. Gold, you know, another example. You know, it doesn't matter what the Financial Times says. It doesn't matter that people say, oh, gold is the barbaric metal. Uh, you know, what do you want to buy gold for? The amount of people that told me that. Um, I started buying gold back in 2002, 2003. Um, and I started buying a lot of commodities. I started getting interested in commodities at that time. Um, and the amount of people that said, what are you doing buying gold? Um, well, you know, you see what the trend on gold is. And this is another stock which, you know, I've made an awful lot of money. Um, I've made around 450% on this in the last 10 years. British American Tobacco. Now, if you read the newspapers, and okay, not as much now, but certainly when I first started getting into this trend, um, if you read about tobacco, it's, well, smokers are giving up litigation yeah everything that could be going wrong for tobacco was going wrong for tobacco but the price was going up now if you know the truth is about tobacco one there are still plenty of people that smoke for every smoker they lose in the uk or the us you know what they pick one up in malaysia or the far east or somewhere else yeah so don't always believe the new story now do you know that stock i told you about dixon's retail um this is the company what can we say about dixon's is it doing well no, I don't think so. But remember, we can make money by going short, yeah? We can basically sell a, a stock we don't own and then buy it back at a lower price. And another stock in the similar sector, HMV Group. Okay, same sort of thing. Basically gone from £2.50 down to 25 pence. Um, and that's over, you know, the last four or five years. Is that business doing well? I don't think so. That's not Apple, is it? Yeah, it's, it's Apple upside down. Dilbert's a great little cartoon, um, and here's what of Dilbert's cartoon. I'm sitting in my box checking my stocks. I'm using my willpower to resist every 10 seconds. I'm sitting in my box checking my stocks. Don't check your share prices every 10 seconds. Yeah, you'll make more mistakes, and you'll get it wrong more often than you'll get it right. And as you remember what I said about the lady checking a Blackberry every five minutes? Don't do it. Yeah, you'll make more errors. A lot of these bookmakers and financial brokers, they're all coming out with apps now on the iPhone and BlackBerry because they want you to trade. They want you to overtrade. More you trade, the more you lose. Okay, and that's all my studies have shown that.